Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. And uh, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the rest. Turn your King James Bible to Ezekiel 36. This is a very, very beautiful chapter. I mean, this might actually be one of my favorite chapters now. Yeah, I've listened to it and I've read it before, but... Um, you know, when you start uh, doing studies on stuff, it's like every time you go through the Bible, you'll find something new. And I think I found something new. Verse 1. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Because the enemy hath said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. What is infamy? Uh, it's being famous, but evil, evilly famous. That ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. If you want to know a good use of infamy, FDR, our nice Jewish president, during the attack on Pearl Harbor, he said that, uh, that uh, December 7th would be a day to live in infamy. Yes, and FDR was one of the tribe. Verse 4. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen, which are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea. Now remember, Idumea is Esau Edom, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your, your fruit to my people Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. Now, I believe that's talking about uh, the multiplication of children. Verse 10. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the cities shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be builded. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. 
and I will settle you after your old estates and will do better unto you than at the beginning. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Well, God gave Israel as a possession. And they built homes and, you know, castles and all kinds of stuff. So how is it going to be better than it was in the beginning? Simple. Well, I believe the answer to that is alluded to in John chapter 14. Jesus speaking. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many apartment buildings, condominiums. No. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Mansions. Well, how about John, Revelation 21 and verse 2? And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Back to Ezekiel 36, verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Oh yeah. Isn't a mansion better than a house? Oh yeah. Verse 12. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men, and hast bereaved thy nations. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwell in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. I'm guessing a removed woman is like a divorce. I'm kind of guessing. Verse 18. Wherefore, Oh, and why did the Lord divorce? Well, why did why is this removed woman? Why is she divorced? If that's the proper interpretation. Because she was unclean sexually. Verse 18. Therefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. 
But I, the Lord, but I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. See, God's not going to do it for them. He's going to do it for his name. 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. You see, people, the Lord himself is going to bring his people into the land. In 1948, the United Nations, a satanic organization, matter of fact, their uh, main publisher was originally called Lucifer Publishing. Yeah, you think uh, they were, uh, you think the United Nations is your Lord that brought them into the land in 1948 into the Middle East? I don't think so, but if you want to believe that, hey, go for it. And you can worship them, those that are in the land now. Verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen. And gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Sorry, I haven't seen the Lord bring them to the land. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Now, what are they talking about, sprinkling water and them being clean? Uh, well, what did John the Baptist do? Didn't he baptize people in the River Jordan? But is that what they're talking about? Uh, washing of the flesh? Is that what they're talking about? I mean, there's a, I think it's called the Church of God. They call them the Campbellites because some guy named Campbell uh, started a new denomination. Hey, let's take one verse out of the Bible and start a new denomination. And they teach that, uh, if memory serves me correctly, that you got to be baptized with water to be saved. You know, that's that's what the Bible says. Uh, well, did Jesus lie to the thief on the cross when he told him that this day thou shalt be with me in paradise? Did the thief on the cross get baptized? Did they take him down from the cross and then baptize him after he was dead? Uh, you know, don't ask him those kind of questions because they can't answer. But I think Paul has the answer here. What about, you know, being clean from water? Well, Ephesians 5, verse 24 Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Oh boy, women don't want to hear that of the feminist persuasion. But they do want to hear verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. What did Christ give for his church? His life. Christ so loved the church that he gave himself, his life, for it. So a husband, you're supposed to love your wives, even to the point if you have to give your life to protect your wife. 
Seriously. Yeah, it's sort of a package deal here, you know. I had performed hundreds of weddings, hundreds of weddings. And not many people wanted to have this read. Oh, they wanted to hear the husbands love your wives part, but they didn't want the, the verse before that. And I always told the women, uh, it's a package deal. You want this read? I'm going to read the whole thing. You know, they didn't like that, but hey, it's a package deal. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify, sanctify means set apart, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Ah, that's what he means by cleansing it. Oh yeah, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Huh. So what is this word of God? Well, let's have the Bible explain the Bible. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that, knew, that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called... The Word of God. And if you don't know who this is talking about, uh, you got a problem. <laughs> so, yeah. Ezekiel 36, 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. So he wants to replace the stony heart with a heart of flesh. Oh yeah. And I think this verse uh, ties in. 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all made to drink into one Spirit. Oh, yeah. All right, so 26. Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit, a new spirit, will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for the iniquities and for your abominations, not for your sakes, 
do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be builded. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, built the ruined places and plant that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And that's the end of Ezekiel 36. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. To God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.